I start any piece by putting reference lines on my paper or canvas, whatever the case might be. As you can see, this is a photograph that I took just 10 minutes ago of a table that was sitting behind me. And then using the markup tool on, on my iPhone, I put these reference lines so I can divide the image into six pieces, more or less. And then I, it makes it easy for me to know which uh, item belongs where. So I'm going to start with that tree in the background. Something like this comes up to the halfway point. That's my tree. Those are the branches, more or less. Here's the second tree. I think there are two trees there. Uh, right here is like a pipe or something coming down. Here's a piece of the wall that goes down. Here's another piece of wall. I think this one goes all the way up. This is the dark section right here. Um, and then here you've got an area that comes down like this. And this is a piece of the roof line. So let's see now. Here you've got the hair of the first figure which is right around there. Here you've got the, the back of the head of a figure. I, uh, the image is dark, I can't tell what's what, but more or less. I'm just blocking so you get an idea it's like this. Something like that. <clears throat> there is a chair here, I can tell. And then there's a person sitting right here. A bit of bun at the back of her head. She's got a neckline. She's kind of slouched in the chair. So that's more or less what that looks like. This person's hand, no, that's her hand. That's her arm and hand, it goes like this. And she too is sitting on a similar kind of chair, like, like the one I'm sitting on. So you've got one figure, two figures. This needs, the face needs to be a little bit rounder. There you go. Okay, then you've got, got a figure here looking at the baby. Wow, nobody's looking at a cell phone. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> you know what? Uh, that's a joke because here in Brazil, I don't see way too many people looking at cell phones like in the States. Of course, this also is a working class neighborhood. So a cell phone is really a necessity for these folks mostly rather than a luxury to stick their nose into 24 hours a day like other people do that I know of. I used to be like that but since I've come to Brazil I really don't get online that much and I'm way better off for it. I check it once or twice a day, check it at the end of the day. Uh, so this figure is holding a child and my, this will be my focal point of the painting right here. This person looking down holding a child and the child's head is right around here. The child is looking that way and the child is reaching out with his or her arm like so. Oops, I think I made the arm too long. Something like that. That's, I think, what the blocking looks like more or less. I love these pencils. You know why? Because they never need sharpening. When the lead runs out, you just press a button and you're good to go. 
I mean, technology, I'm one of these artists who is not a purist. I believe if there's technology to make your life easier as an artist, well, then use it. I mean, people have said to me, yeah, you're real artists use a pencil that has wood and you gotta sharpen it and you can't use a sharp and you gotta use a blade. Come on, guys. Get with the program. It's what I gotta say to that. Uh, but hey, all love to all of you. I love everybody. It's not a big deal. That's just my philosophy. So that's the bum of the child. I can't really see what's going on, so I'll just put a little circle there for now. And later on, we'll figure it out. Do something like this. This person has a leg somewhere. Maybe this is part of the arm right there. And then you've got a table surface with some stuff on it. Now, this person right here has an arm. And she's doing something like that. Brazilians are very passionate. As you can tell, the two guys there, one is waiting for his hair to be cut. The guy with the dog, he's pretty calm. And the other guy just rocking it. <laughs> They're having some discussion about soccer, or, I'm guessing, soccer or politics. Because the election, the big election, the presidential election in Brazil is coming next year. Uh, a little over a year from now. People are pretty fired up as to who's going to be president, whether it's going to be Bolsonaro, who is currently the president, or will it be somebody else? I guess time will tell. All right, so then now we continue with the reference thingy. So now there's another figure here. So let's make that figure. And this figure... So that's one guy who's talking a lot is leaving. So I think the volume quotient should go down shortly. That's <laughs> pretty fired up. In a good way. In a good way. That's what I like about countries like Brazil. You feel alive. You feel alive because everybody's talking, somebody's singing, somebody's driving by with music all loud. You go to the market, it's, it's completely full of people and noise and dogs barking. And it's a whole different ball game here than it is back home in the States. So this bit here does not belong. So this will be mixed out. This bit is dark. This will be mixed up. So this does the light. Okay, now we're gonna make a man standing back there. And because this is part of my alcoholics uh, series, I'm gonna make a man holding a beer and walking into a bar. Because here you can do pretty much anything. So this guy I'm gonna make walking either back to the bar or to his table or something because right next door to me right here behind where I'm sitting is a bar so I'm sitting in a delicatessen but if I want to have a beer which I won't and I don't want to it's literally a five second walk behind me so we'll give this guy a glass of beer well, how about a bottle of beer? He's a real alcoholic. A glass of beer is for losers. The real alcoholics drink bottles. So he's a real alcoholic and he's walking. And then there's another chair there. And this is a white chair with a table in front of it. And we're just gonna suggest that we're not gonna make it real detail and then behind this guy I'm gonna put a sign that says something over like a it's a bar or something right maybe we'll say bar I put an arrow or something so it doesn't look like he's drinking juice it's gonna look like so as you can tell now here's the reference image 
right? And there is what I just drew from a photograph that I took of a couple sitting, of a family sitting on that table. So now we're going to start painting. We're going to start by putting background colors first. So I've got some white gouache that came out of a tube. I'm going to dilute that with a little bit of blue, a little bit of water. Now we're going to start putting some color. Now remember, I'm not looking at the photograph anymore, so now everything that I'm going to do is going to come from my imagination. Because as I mentioned before, I don't simply copy what I photograph, because then where's the artistic value in that? I put my imagination on here. I've got everything I need in terms of reference material to get going. The rest is up to me. Even though I just painted over a Y, which I'm thinking was something to do with yellow, I'll play around with it and see what that needs to be as I finish this piece in about two hours or so. That's what I love about these gouache paintings. Two hours is probably all you need to paint one of these and because they're small they can be shipped in an envelope anywhere in the world so that means if you're watching this and you want to buy any of my artwork all you got to do is go to my website which is artistepicara.com and contact me if you're interested in a particular piece and I'll let you know if it's still available or not. It's here too because they're from the European lineage. That's what I mean. Brazil is a very interesting country. A melting pot and for the most part everybody gets along. Um, so. So this family that I'm painting, uh, the reason I even began to say that was this subject right here, who's also against the light, so she also, she also would not be all lit up because she's sitting against the light, right? So the light would be around her. It would be around her shoulders and arms. Uh, almost like an outline. Yeah? Yeah, you get what I'm saying? You catch my drift? Hmm? You get what I'm saying? Hmm? <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Alright, so, let's go back. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing in purple. Pretty much everybody's gonna be like this and then we're gonna go, go back and work on one figure at a time. Of course I just painted over my note that said pink but I'll remember. I'll remember because these things are not hard to Remember, that's the magic of small paintings. Okay, am I at a loss of words? No, I just decided to give my tongue a rest. <laughs> so. 
You know, I'm quite enjoying, I just realized I must not like talking. Apparently I do. This is my very first video of my very first plein air piece in Brazil. And actually, I'm usually a, stu I'm a studio artist. So for me to dive into uh, plein air and not only paint on camera for the first time, which you're seeing me do, but also for the first time uh, narrate as I go. It's not, not a voiceover added later on. This is, I'm talking to you as I'm painting. So I think I'm multi-talented. I've got the gift of the gab and I can paint. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> All right, so that's the baby there. That's the mother right here. This is the baby's butt, baby's leg. Mama's face right over there. And then let's go ahead and block this chair as well. One over there. Okay, and now let's put in a slight suggestion of this guy. So the purple I'm just using as a dark value, as you can see. I'll of course give him a red shirt, I'll give him a pair of blue jeans or something, by the time it's all said and done. Alright, so now the blocking is pretty much done, I'm going to soften up this tree, I don't want it to be having hard edges. I don't like this tree, but I love trees in general. I don't like this tree, <laughs> so we're gonna end up doing something creative with it as time goes by. So as you can see, you know, because life, again, for the old timers, these are Kodachrome moments. Kodachrome moments. Again, the old timers will know what I'm talking about. Kodachrome means there's many colors, many colors. It's not just black and white, as you can see. You can see blue, you can see red, gray, green, red, yellow, many colors. It's Kodachrome. All right, let me grab some pink. I'm feeling pink, it's darker pink. And this girl had a pink shirt, right? So let's add darker pink to suggest areas where the light would not be hitting her, right? And we leave the purple for those areas that are still dark, right? I'm gonna put the camera back down on stand and just paint without holding it. So again, I'm looking at my reference chart to get a feel for what colors go where. Okay, let's use some of this pink on this guy's shirt because he's a girly man. So now we're starting to we're starting to have we're starting to have color happening.
So I just met a guy who I think I spoke Portuguese to. I think I spoke before I got by. And he gave me his name and his number and he told me to WhatsApp him. And he's an artist as well. So I'm going to reach back out to him at the end of the day. And uh, this is how you meet people. You know, Brazil is a beautiful country. Friendly people, great weather. I love Brazil. Now back to the painting. Okay, so. Well, as you can tell, I'm giving my mouth a rest <laughs> after trying to speak Portuguese. But, you know, I, many of you don't know, I, I speak multiple languages already. So, in India, most people speak three languages. If you're educated, you speak three languages off the cuff. And here's how that goes. You speak your mother, mother tongue, the language that you were, the area that you were born into. Right? So in my case, I was born in Punjab, which is northern India. So I speak Punjabi just by virtue of being born there. Then you speak the national language, and in India, the national language is Hindi. So everybody speaks Hindi because this way all the Indians can communicate with one common language. So that's two. Then I went to an English-speaking boarding school. So I obviously had to learn English. We spoke English at home anyway, but my schooling was in English as well. So I, by the time I graduated high school, I was uh, fluent in not one, not two, but three languages. Then I decided to go to school in Europe. And it was either Switzerland, so I could learn French. I wanted to go to hotel school. So hotel school, a couple of choices, Switzerland or Germany or Austria. Uh, just so happened that I took a liking, I took a liking to a school in Austria. But there was a caveat. The caveat was the schooling was in German, the books were in German, this, that and the other. But the director of the school said, you know, I got full faith in Indians who come here because I was not the first Indian to go to that school. He said the Indians tend to pick up German pretty well and you don't need to be a rocket scientist in German. You just need to know German good enough to, to understand what's going on in the class and pass the exams and what have you. So, and then he told me, get yourself a German girlfriend and you'll be rocking German in no time. And you know, that's what I did. My first girlfriend was German. And I won't mention her name, but she is friends with me on Facebook. And she knows exactly what I'm talking about. She taught me German. And we lived together for a couple of years. And then after we graduated, we moved on. Uh, I went to work in the Middle East. She stayed in Germany. And uh, she's now married with happily married with a couple of kids and a beautiful husband and I too so that's how my language things happen and now I'm married to Elsie who's Brazilian and speaks Portuguese obviously but I'm also 60 years old so the brain cells kind of get fried a little bit over time and it's not that easy to pick up a new language that fast anymore but I'm doing my best and I'm hoping 
that I will know enough to get myself in and out of trouble fairly soon. Uh, so. Okay, now we got that action happening. Let's. dilute this orange a little bit it's a little too orangey plus I need to hide the pencil marks I gotta remember that not to make so many pencil marks You know this white gouache that comes out of tubes, tubes that I'm painting with right now? I love it because it has a more solid consistency than the white that comes out of the bottle. And therefore, I'm talking about this right here, this, this guy right here. crying out loud let me have another song to whistle to God <laughs> it will it will come when I least expect it another song will pop up in my head and before I know it I'll be whistling it okay light blue as highlights. Let's see how that works here. There you go. Actually, it does look good. Now, you would think, why would you put blue highlights? Because sunlight is not blue, it's white. It's called artistic license, my friends. Because I choose to experiment. And I choose to as Frank Sinatra would say, I did it my way. <laughs> right? Uh, oh yeah, it looks so much better. So much better. Now you got people sitting in front of me and behind me, they think I'm a lunatic. <laughs> no. No, by now they know. Uh, well, they can see the GoPro that I've got sitting in front of me. They know that I'm doing a voiceover. And... Man, I wish I had a dog. It's a lot of work. But I, I sometimes think it'd be nice to have a dog sitting at my feet right now. But then again, I'm looking at the dog in front of me and I don't need to walk it, I don't need to clean after it, I don't need to take it to the vet. And if I wanted to, I could probably go and pet it and get that desire out, which actually I've done quite a few times. There's so many dogs here in Brazil and people have no problems with letting you come by and pet them. Ah, there, 
there goes that song again. Oh, come on. If it doesn't get on my head soon, I'm going to just Google a few songs. And I'm actually trying to think of some Spanish songs. Spanish hits. Because I, I know Spanish songs more than I do. Portuguese ones since I lived in the States and I had Spanish speaking friends all over the place. Okay. So painting is putting lights next to docks. If you can master that, and I too am in the process of learning, trust me, I'm not anywhere near as proficient as I'd like to be. You see, I'm a perfectionist. And it actually takes a lot of courage for a perfectionist like me to sit here in public and do this because people are watching me. And I'm thinking that I'm not putting my best foot forward and that I ought not to let people see what I'm doing till it's ready to be shown. But you know, I, I, I've just realized that that is not a good way of thinking. What I ought to be doing, or what, what I am doing, what I should have done a long time ago, is to have taken the plunge and had I done that first I've been dying to get out of the studio and paint outdoors which is what I'm doing right now had I gotten rid of my intimidation of painting outdoors earlier on uh, like years and years ago I would have been I, I, I pushed myself I would have been a kick-ass plein air painter I mean, I would have been a kick-ass plain air painter by now. No, it's never too late. I'm, I'm taking the plunge. I probably still will be a kick-ass painter, uh, plain air painter, but it'll just take me a little bit longer now. Uh, right? That's, that's the good thing about painting. There's no age limit. You can be 80 years old and still be painting. And if the good Lord keeps me going for another 20, 30 years. This is an activity I really relish. It's a great way to spend time with yourself, by yourself, make friends. Um, stay out of trouble. And all is good. Feel like adding. Well, I'll... The scene that I shot is actually behind me. I'm facing the wrong direction. So I cannot really see the values as they occur in reality. But what I'm going to do is once I get to a certain point in this painting, I will. Um, turn myself around so I can look at this area. And people are long gone. That's why I took the photograph, to freeze them. Uh, but I can look at the rest of what's there, which is not moving anytime soon. Uh, then I can get an idea of what to paint, because this is all looking rather flat right now, but it won't be flat for long once I start looking at things. So. I'm gonna, oh, I've got a song that just came to my mind. It's a song from Bollywood. It's a really old one, so I'm going to just whistle it.
रात कली एक खाब में आई and then the rest of the song i don't really know rat kali ek khab mein and the rest of the song i don't really know there's so many if you guys don't see bollywood movies nowadays they're cranking out some really good good storylines and the ones that I like best are the ones that have actors that you've never heard of before. Because then you're engrossed in the story and you're not caught up in people who are stars. Because in India, they really worship their, their actors. And I'm a movie maker, in case you guys don't know, I've actually directed three feature length films, independent, small budget feature length films. So, I'm not enamored by stardom as much as I am by good storylines. So, watching on Netflix Bollywood movies with no-name actors and good storylines is much more interesting to me. So, putting highlights on people here just to get a better, to make it pop a little bit. Yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna scribble in the word bar right here. Okay, now we got a guy going into the bar. Sounds like a comedian's opening line. So there was this guy that went to a bar. <laughs> right? Sounds like an opening line for a comedian. There's this guy that goes to the bar. And this is that guy. I wonder what happens when he gets in there. He finds his wife in there. <laughs> She beats the hell out of him says, Hey, I thought you told me you were going shopping. What are you doing here at the bar? And he says, What are you what are you doing in here? She says, Well, I thought I'd have a drink before I went shopping. You see, so that's the problem these days. Lots of alcoholics all over the place. And trust me, I am one too. I am desperately trying to quit and not easy. Not easy, not at all easy, as the Arabic friends would say, not at all easy, not at all easy, not at all easy. Not at all. Habibi, not at all easy, no, no. Of course, the Arabs don't drink, so they tell you. <laughs> I live in the Middle East, so I know, I know. Okay, so let's paint this this little thing in. This is the support for the awning. Ah, uh, it went off course. But that's okay. I'm gonna grab some white. And I'm gonna let loose and cover up my mistake. That's it, like so. All right, so. 
Okay, so let's just give some suggestions of buildings and stuff at the back. We're not gonna actually paint them in because then that would take focus away from this group over here. I've yet to do more work on this mother and child. But by the time I'm done, this will be the focal point of this piece, not the guy with the beer. Even though it will be titled after the guy with the beer, because this painting is being added to my collection of alcoholics. And as you know, I'm, I'm creating paintings that have to do with alcoholism. Uh, so this kind of subject matter will feature in every one of my paintings and then we'll see maybe I'll do a show and I'll invite all the alcoholics that I know and they'll all get drunk <laughs> that will be totally self-defeating <laughs> yeah, half of what I say guys I, I, if you know me half of you uh, for those that know me half of what I say is tongue-in-cheek tongue-in-cheek uh, a friend of mine his name is Chad Ridgely I'll tell you his story so Chad Ridgely used to be a police officer in uh, Prince George's County Maryland uh, he was actually yeah he was a, maybe he was the chief of police I don't know maybe in Brandywine but he was also an actor so he I met him because we were casting some cops in one of my movies, one of my feature films, and he applied and we cast him because he was the perfect fit because he is a cop. So nobody had to act being a cop, he was already a cop. So he, uh, you know, did well in the movie, he did well in many other movies for many other people, he started making his own movies. Turns out he quit being a cop and he went to Hollywood. Then he got a job at the Playboy Mansion of all places. Uh, then he became a stand-up comic. In fact, he's a stand-up comic right now. You can check him out, Chad Ridgely. Uh, and he divides his time between Los Angeles and Florida and Miami. Really funny guy. Uh, and you know, he's uh, an inspiration to me because not only is he a good actor, he is now a stand-up comedian. Oh, and get this, he was in the last scene of uh, Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know the very last scene where a cop shows up? That's him. <laughs> Again, he plays a cop. Uh, isn't that incredible? So, someone that I met in Frederick, Maryland, we worked on a, my film together. We shot the entire film in Buckystown, Maryland. It was called The Inn. And he goes on to star in a Quentin Tarantino international big budget film. Uh, and he also now makes his own movies and he also does stand-up comedy. So folks, the lesson from that is if you got a talent, you know, if you're gonna sit around and do nothing, nothing's gonna happen. You get it? Nothing's going to happen. If you've got a talent and you do nothing, nothing's going to happen. But if you believe in yourself, like Chad did, if you work hard, like obviously he did and he is, anything is possible in America. This is why I came to America in 1986, 84, 86, I forget, one of those years, is because it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who your father is. It doesn't matter who your mother is. It doesn't matter how much money you were born with or not. If you work your back end off, it's a level playing field. Unlike many other countries, America is a level playing field. You just got to work your back end off, your tushy off. And then you could be anything. That was my story of Chad Ridgely. Nice guy. Go support him.
check out his website, go watch his films, go watch his comedy, cast him in your movies. If you're an agent watching this, he's a funny guy, etc. All right, what else? And you're welcome, Chad. You are a nice guy. All right, what else? Oh, now we got a table surface here, so we got to put some highlights there because the kid is trying to reach out to something on the table, obviously. You know, these kind of horns remind me of India because there's a move. This cool part, also, you don't follow Portuguese. <laughs> You so follow English. No entiendo. No dinero. No dinero. Sula plastic. No dinero. Disculpa. Yeah, so this is guy just walked up to me, he's asking for money. It's quite common. Uh, but yeah, these days everybody's got plastic. Who carries cash around? Nobody does. He's obviously had a few too many early in the morning. Oh, it's one o'clock. I'm sure he's got six or seven already inside him. And he asked me for two reais, which is like 50 cents. And I just told him, sorry, I, 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 don't, I don't got any. I don't got any. Well, that's not what I said, but he got the gist of it. finish this in one sitting. I'm gonna to have to come back. I think I just improved on the tree just by doing some of this abstract stuff. We still have a tree, but it's a much better looking tree. Don't you think? Much better looking tree. Oh yeah. This is what you call a happy accident. I just met with a happy accident where I just decided to take a risk with my brush and it was a happy 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 accident now let's see if we can play around with some whites in there and who's your daddy <laughs> when I'm messing around with Elsie I often say to her Hey, who's your daddy? And she tells me her dad's name and says, I forget his, her dad's name. She says, My daddy is so and so. And then we laugh. He is her daddy. Alrighty, so things are starting to fall into shape. So the danger always is that you end up working a piece that it ends up losing the painterly quality. And if it loses the painterly quality, then it starts to get too overworked. And if it gets too overworked, then what's the point? Might as well go get a camera and, and take a picture. It needs to not lose the painterly quality. Which means knowing when to stop. You know, it's knowing when to stop. And I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I will at some point. Alright. 
Oh, here was that chair. So let's go ahead and put the dark value on the chair. And I'm just going to reverse paint. So I'm putting the darks and leaving the lights. And there's your chair. And then I'll just put something like that. And that's how you make a chair. I love painting outdoors. You know, part of the reason I came to the show is to experience people, is to experience the sights and sounds of the country. You know, it's not so easy to get all this in the States anymore. Everything is so developed. Uh, you know, because everything is so developed, you know, everything looks the same. Every exit, every interstate looks the same. The Brazilian cuisine is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Because Brazil has such a long coastline, the fish and anything fish related in Brazil is yamalicious. Is that a word? Yamalicious? Well, let's just pretend it is. I just created a word. Yamalicious. Man, Peppy. Yamalicious. So, so this hand also decides to have some red. So as you can see, things are starting to happen for this piece. There's an inner voice saying to me, hey, paint details on eyes, paint details on eyes. And my rational voice is saying, no, just leave it exactly the way it is because of the power of suggestion. Now I'll come in with my fine zero number brush or whatever that number is, and I'll add some little details on hands and this and that to complete the illusion but no more than that because then you're in photography territory I'm liking it I'm liking it the light and dark values are starting to to look good except I screwed up there I'll fix it if this is dark, that needs to be light. If this is dark, this is dark, so that needs to be light. I'll fix it. You get what I'm saying, right guys? So this is light, that's dark, so it works. But if they were both the same color, it wouldn't work, right? You got to, as you progress, progress. I just spoke like a Canadian, progress. My, my family's Canadian, so I, I know how strange they speak up there. <laughs> Hello, Canada. Love you. Now, as you progress, that's how Americans say progress. Progress is for the Canucks, for the Canadians. As you progress, oh, I just reverted to Canadian again. As you progress, you got to keep an eye on that. That your values are always, your lights are always adjacent to darks. If you can remember that, you have a future as an artist. And maybe you can pay your bills being an artist. Now that's it, uh, just because one is good, marketing yourself is a whole different bowl of wax. So as I uh, mentioned, there's a bar right behind me. And there's a guy sitting on the table behind me just letting loose the beer in brazil is delicious but it's very strong so for those of you that are planning to visit here keep that in mind and they have a very low tolerance for drinking and driving so their threshold for drinking and driving 
is half a, a, a half a beer, a half a beer in the U.S. So imagine here they serve beers in big bottles. All right, so I'm liking it. I am actually surprised at myself. This is my first plein air piece ever. Oh, I take that back. Maybe I've done one or two pathetic ones which I ended up throwing in the trash and told nobody about them. <laughs> now I'm going to switch from this to a very thin brush, which is this guy. Look how thin it is. And I'm going to work on this. So let's get going. Without further ado, Mr. Pepe. Let's go. looks good because it suggests she has a hand and fingers. I'm going to put light values around her dark fingers so the fingers stand out as you can see. Ah, well, that works. That works. Now, this baby's hand needs to be small because it's a baby. Now, so what I'm doing is I'm... There you go. That's even smaller. Something like that. Maybe it's too long. There you go. That's the le right length. That's the right man. This guy's reeking of beer. Oh my god, I can. It's going right up my nostrils. And since I'm an alcoholic, recovering alcohol, not good. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's walking away. Godspeed, my friend. Godspeed. May you live to enjoy another beer. Boy. And he's got a cross tattooed on the back of his head. What is what is with people who are totally lost in life, but they walk around with tattoos of religious symbols? Is it that they wish for salvation? Or is it that they're just trying to tell people that something else? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, this guy... And a huge cross tattoo emblazoned on the back of his shaved bald head, if you know what I mean. <laughs> 